Today, we're looking at yet another Notion update, and this one's pretty good. This is the native progress bar. So now we can create progress bars in Notion that are native to the program. All you need is a number, whether that be from a number property in your database or a formula. You'll notice now with these numbers that you have the option inside of the database menu to convert that number into either a progress bar or a progress ring. We're going to look at sort of the basic functionality of this new feature and some interesting use cases. If you want to follow along, there is an empty page down in the description below so you can follow along with me in the video. There's also a completed template with all of the finished examples and formulas. So we're going to just get right into it. The first one is going to be a habit tracker. And in the habit tracker table, every single page is a new day. And we have five different checkboxes which illustrate each habit. So from habit one to habit five. What you can do to create a progress bar in Notion now is either have a number property or a formula property that returns a number. In this case, we're going to use a formula property. So we have two formula properties, one that's just going to return a number. I'm gonna click through to this first one. And what I wanna do is just add up how many checkboxes here are ticked true. To do that, I'm going to use a function called toNumber, and it looks like this, with T being lowercase and N uppercase. Inside of toNumber, I'm going to click inside of my property section here, habit one. One will be true, zero will be false. So let's just copy this. I'm gonna say plus, paste, habit two, plus, habit three, four and five. So now what we have is everything added up. For this first row, you'll see that three is the return because there are three checkboxes. So all we need is this number. So just click the heading, edit property. And now when you have a number, we have this option in the menu. You can show as a number, as a bar, or as a ring. Let's show this as a bar. Because all we have is a number here and not a percentage, we can convert into a percentage via this menu. That is what this divide by option is. In this case, we want to divide by five because there are five habits. So you'll notice that just because we did convert this to a percentage does not mean that we're seeing a percentage. I would choose the option, do not show number, and I would give myself a little bit more of a minimal look. So this is all you'll really need to create a progress bar in Notion now, which is pretty cool. We don't need really crazy formulas anymore. But if you do want to show a percentage number with your progress bar, you will have to create a percentage number. So let's do that in this next formula. First, let's just copy and paste this result in the previous formula into the next one. And inside of this formula, let's divide by five. So I'm just going to isolate this inside of parentheses, open and close, beginning and end, and divide by five. So this is a pretty clean number, but that won't always be the case. Sometimes you'll have numbers returning like 0.3333333. So let's clean this up just in case we have something like that. So what you'll want to do here is round your number down. To do that, I'm going to use a function called floor, which is just rounding the number down. So why use floor and not, you know, like the round function, which does exist? Well, when you're working with percentages and say you have a percentage result of 99.8, it's not quite 100, but if you use the round function, it will round up to 100, which you don't want. So we're going to round everything down. So let's say floor 100 times, put an end parentheses at the end, divide by 100. So our original formula is this right here. And the added floor function is what is not highlighted. So let's press done. And what we're gonna do is convert this via this one, two, three button 
or we can just click on the title again and go to edit property and change the number format from here from number to percent and then click bar. And now what we have is that percentage plus the progress bar. You can also change the color maybe to orange. And that is the other way we can create a progress bar. Let's go down to the next use case. Let's look at how we can create formulas using a project manager. In this case, we have two separate databases, one for projects at the top with these cards labeled project A and B, and down below a database for tasks. There is a property for the name of the task, status, which we have three different options here, not started, in progress, and done, and a deadline property, which is just a date property. And of course, in order to connect these two databases, we have a relation property, which is this project property. So if I click through and edit this property really quickly, if you're unfamiliar with Notion, this property is really great. So in type, this would be under advanced, under formula called relation. This connects two databases together. In this case, we're related to projects, and in projects, we have another property called tasks. And this is a backlink property as shown in this preview window. So with this connection, I can go into project A, open this up as a page, and you'll see all the tasks connected to project A. With this connection, what we can do is actually use a property called a rollup to grab this status property. So I have two rollups already created. One that grabs the percentage of tasks connected to project A that are not started and ones that are in progress. Let's create a rollup that grabs the percentage of tasks done. So add a property. So let's rename this to done. Change the type to rollup. And with a rollup, all you need is a relation. In this case, we only have one called tasks. We have the property from tasks called status. And what I want to do is calculate percent per group that are completed. And like with the formula, we can convert numbers into progress bars. We will have to create a separate formula property. So let's go to add a property and name this percent not started. And this is the property I want to show through the card. And let's change this into a formula. And edit to just grab not started roll up. Right here in properties, it is a number. So what we'll have to do is use that floor function again or 100 times, close this out, and then divide by 100. That'll give us a cleaner number. What we can do is convert this via this one, two, three button into a percent, and in not started, edit property, and we can show this as a bar again, and give this maybe the color red, since the not started status option is red. So that'll give us some context. What I can do is just duplicate not started and just rename this to percent in progress and simply change this color to blue and edit the formula to grab, instead of the not started roll up, we're going to grab the in progress roll up. And then do that again one more time. Duplicate, rename 2% done. And I can edit this property to change the color to green. And then just click through this formula and change in progress to the done roll up. So that is the final result. 
I'm just gonna make sure I hide this done roll up because all I want to see are these formulas. So I'm gonna click done, hide property, always hide. Now what I can do is go back to that home page, go to my cards here, go to the database menu, properties, and the property I wanna see is percent not started by clicking this I symbol, in progress and done. So this will give us an updated progress of each project between not started and finished. In this one, I want to show you how to cap these new progress bars at 100%. So if whatever calculation you're making exceeds 100% or goes below 0%, it will cap at zero and 100. What we're gonna do here is determine where today lands within a date range. So you'll see this database down here where we have a date range property. Well, it's a date property, but I have the end date toggled on. So in this instance, I am recording on the 14th of August and this date range is completely in the past and today is nowhere near it. So this will give me a number over 100%. In example B, today is within this date range from the 8th to the 17th. Now, if you're watching this video past the 17th of August, you can adjust this date to make sure this red circle or today is within your date range. In this case, what I wanna do is see the percentage to completion which is the 17th of August in relation to today. And that percentage looks like this. We're gonna use this percentage hide formula to make this calculation. So let's say date between, so we just wanna find first the days between now and the start of the date range. So between now and the start, and between these parentheses, let's click date range and the number of days, which in this case would be seven. We're gonna divide this by date between the end of date range and the start of date range. Clicking date range here in the number of days as well. So now we have a number. This number is a little bit long, so let's cut it down. Let's say floor 100 times. Again, close that floor function out and divide by 100 at the end. What we can do here is just convert this, one, two, three, two percent. If you want to round this number to a more exact number, just change 100 to 1000. So here I'll get 233.3 we can convert this into a progress bar. However, we have a number over 100%. So we're gonna go over to the to end date and create our progress bar here. We're just gonna call upon this percentage hide property, which we will, of course, hide. So what I wanna do is create an if statement. So if percentage hide is less than zero, then zero, so we'll cap it. If percentage hide is greater than one, then one, cap it at one. Otherwise, just give me percentage hide, that property. And let's close that out with two parentheses because there are two if statements. So there's our short formula. And now what we have, if I convert this to a percentage, is because 233 is over 100, we're capping it at 100. So from here, we can just simply create that progress bar. So let's click on to end date, edit property, and convert to a bar. Maybe change the color to purple. And adjust this column. And like I said, we can hide this property by clicking on the title and hide in view.
Let's go on to the next use case, which is a use case I created when this update first released. I'm creating calendar covers. So some of these progress bars I created were to determine the progress of a current week, current month, and current day. I'm going to show you how you can create a progress bar that tracks the progress of a current day inside of a calendar. Let's look at today, 814. If you're following along after today, 814, just create a card on the day that you're currently on. What we have here is a date property and just a formula called daily progress. So in daily progress, what I want to do is determine, is this date landing on today? So the first if statement is going to say formatting date. So that's the function we want to use here of date, comma, formatting it to two capital L's. If this equals in the same way formatting the date of now to two capital L's, I just want to return the hour of now plus the minute of now. Now for the minute, I want to turn this into a decimal. So I'm going to isolate this and say minute divided by 60. Now the next if statement is going to be if the date is in the past, I want a full progress bar. So if date is less than now, give me the number 24. Otherwise, give me the number zero for all dates in the future. I'm gonna close this out with two parentheses because there's two if statements. And we have the number 11.55. So right now I am filming this at around 11.30, it's 11.33. What I can do is click on daily progress, edit property, and let's turn this into a progress bar. What I can do is I could just divide this by 24. And what this will do is give me an accurate representation of the progress of this day. Of course, there's 24 hours in a day, and that's why I'm dividing by 24. I do not want to show the number. Great. Now let's go back to the home page and take a look at this calendar. So I want to see this progress bar in my calendar. If I go to the database menu and go to properties, I can show daily progress. You'll notice that all past dates are full and today is about almost halfway done. And that is all of the use cases I wanted to share with you today. Let's just go right into the outro. Notion has been rolling out a lot of features lately, including some custom icons and other really cool features. But this one, the progress bars, are one of my favorites. If you are familiar with my videos, you know that the progress bar formula can get a bit lengthy. So this really simplifies it and makes it a lot easier to implement. Anyway, I'll see you guys the rest of the week on Twitter with some other Notion content and next time with a new video. I'll see you then.